and that brings us up to 560. So we'll say, all right, 9,560. And that's getting close to our threshold here because you'll recall the, the max was the 560, right? So you, going up from this level of income is going to actually bring it back, is going to bring it back down at some point. So nine, let's go to 11,000. 11,000 brings it to 417. So 11,417. And let's go back on over and say uh, 13,000. And that's going to be 264. So we'll get, we'll go, okay, 13,264. And then let's pull this over here. We're going to say, okay, 13, 14, 15,000. It goes up to 16,4, so we're almost there. 15,000. It's going to say 111, 111. And then 16,000, we're getting close to it being phased out completely. $35 we saw before and 35. And then if I go to 16, 18,000, it's going to be down to zero. So 18,000 down to zero. So there's the wages. Here's the credit for no children. And if we map that out with like a, a chart, let's go ahead and put a graph together on that and say, I'm going to insert, let's see what the recommended graph types are. This one looks pretty good. Or we could do it. Let's do this, this here. And we'll get rid of the name. And so we get something like that, right? We get a curve uh, that would be obviously as your income uh, as you as they've got the income over here as your income is going up then the amount of the credit that you're getting is going to go up it caps out and then it goes back down it caps out at that uh, 560 is the general idea so what you really want to have an idea is is the what, what's going to be the shape of this curve at each of these kind of uh, levels and so if I if I go back on over and say the credit is gone if I change it to married then we can say let's go to married and before i do that by the way let's just take a look that curve is similar to this table so right so we've got this table here which you can find on the form 1040 you could do the same thing and you could say okay here's my income levels here's zero uh how you know where do, where, where am i going to be at if i'm within these earned income levels so you can see the earned income is going up 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 we want to see where it maximizes at that so it's still going up 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 and then it's going to maximize somewhere here at that 560 so around 7300 up to so you can see here when we got to the 560 we were at 9000 so 7300 to it's still there at that cap at that 560 to like 9000 and then there's the 9150 and then it goes back down again so if we check another one of our numbers here 15,000 15,000 is going to be down here so we've got 15,111 right so 111 coming from the table so that makes sense so we could take that whole table and graph it out and look at this curve although that would you have to get the data from the table so this is just a few a few plot points on on it just to get an idea okay so then if we if we then change it to married it doesn't quite double everything like you might expect but uh but it, the thresholds go up a little bit so now we're married filing joint we're at the eighteen thousand, and we still have no income at that level uh, because it's because now the standard dedu deduction did double to 25.9 and so we're thinking refundable credits and we're still at the refundable credit level now because we have a different set of tables over here so if i was to look at the tables now the maximum before we phases out completely is at 22,610 22,610 so if this was to keep on going up 
on the W-2 wages. You can go to 22,000 before it goes away entirely. But so you can see, and you can plot the same kind of graph, right? And if you were looking at this, this table, same table, uh, this is the form 1040 instructions, zero here, but now you're looking at married filing joint and you'd be looking up the same kind of items. So next time we'll do a similar thing for, for one child, two child and three child. So really you have, you know, like a, you've got like eight graphs kind of in your, that you'd have to kind of think about in your mind, right? What zero children married or single one chill child married or single has a whole different graph two children married or single three or more children uh married or single so that's the general idea and then the question is well what counts as earned income as well so note that passive income doesn't generally count as earned income so if i was to have you know income from interest or dividends or something that's not going to typically count in terms of earned income for affecting the credit however I, if i have a lot of investment income like over like ten thousand, i think it is which is kind of unusual if you were going to be calculating the earned income tax credit then you you might not get the credit because the idea would then would be well if you got that much dividend and interest income you have you must have a lot of money in the bank or in investments <laughs> which means it's kind of weird that you would be calculating the earned income credit you shouldn't really need it you would think uh in that case so that's that general idea uh as well if you had business income then that would count as well so if you didn't have w-2 income if we take the w-2 income out and you had other business income and this is where the scammers often come in because with the business income you can create a schedule c and, and you can say okay this person doesn't have any income and the scammer will say okay I'm just going to maximize out the income to get, and I'll just add a Schedule C, right? So they'll still go, okay, I got to make around 9,000 income to, to get the credit because I have to have some income. So let's just say that this was 20,000 minus 11,000 advertising, 11,000. And so now we've got this, and I'm just doing this quickly just to get an idea, but now we got the Schedule C income. The net income is 9,000, which ultimately pulls into page one of the form 1040 of 9,000. So now you've got your income. And if I go to page two and I was looking at, yeah, there's the, there it is. So now you've got your earned income tax credit, right? So that's, and the reason scammers do that is because, is because the W-2 income, there's verification on the IRS's side if they had W-2 income. So they can't really do that. So you can imagine them trying to use some other income like Schedule C income, what you would think would be fairly common because the IRS can't double check that so easy. And so you want to be careful of, you know, the scammy tax preparers because obviously you could be audited to be trying to take advantage of the uh, earned income tax credit by actually trying to increase people's earnings so that they can pick up this credit, which could be substantial, not so much for zero uh, dependents, but once you get to three or more dependents, it starts to be quite substantial uh, as we as we could see and we'll take a look at some more of those tables in future presentations.